This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. Always a pleasure to have Fred Flights with us, uh, with us, the president of the Center for Security Policy. He's served there since 2000. How many years have you been there, Fred? A couple now? Three? I've been here, I've been here since 2013, but I've been president. This is my third year as president. Yeah, boy, and you were chief of staff at National Security Council uh, under President Trump and, of course, a, a senior CIA analyst, and you've worked all over the place, Intelligence Committee, as House staff. Uh, you're back, and it's nice to, to have you here. Happy holidays. You have a opinion editorial, a big one, and I know you're going to be on Fox later nationally on their TV station, but Fox Opinion, time to end diplomacy with Iran and admit Trump was right. Let's get into that. And, and why are you writing this now? Well, you know, incredibly, after massive cheating on its nuclear obligations by Iran, refusal to explain evidence of secret nuclear weapons work at three, three facilities, starting out the week uh, threatening to annihilate Israel again, um, the Biden administration has shown interest in giving Iran sanctions relief in exchange for Iran partially freezing its nuclear program. And I think Iran behaved so badly this week that I have to think that even some Biden officials and the Europeans may realize it's time to stop the talks and to simply reimpose tough sanctions the same way that uh, President Trump dealt with Iran. Now, in... Vienna, Austria, there was a meeting on Monday. You write that world powers met in Austria for the sixth round of talks. Now, why are they meeting? In, obviously, they're meeting to negotiate, but, but is this an event? Is it an annual event there, or was it spur of the moment or impromptu there in Austria? There's been a series of talks since Biden came into office to try to get the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran uh, back on track. Trump pulled out of it. Iran is no longer complying with it. it, Well, is no longer uh, publicly complying with it. It was cheating on it anyway. And uh, the the previous round of talks didn't go very well. But, you know, what's interesting about these talks is that the U.S. is not at them. The U.S. diplomats are at an adjoining hotel because the Iranians refused to meet with Americans face-to-face. And, and, and my belief is that that's Iran's attitude. We shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be going along with it. We should say, if you want to deal with us, you have to meet with us personally. Israel Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, you talk about the fact he's expressed Israel's grave concerns about this latest round of discussions. And he, he makes a point, he says, Iran is seeking, you've written this quote, to end sanctions. Iran's like, hey, quit the sanctions, and guess what we'll give you, world? We're going to give you nothing. And then we'd also like to keep our nuclear program intact and keep receiving billions of dollars. <laughs> it's like, are you crazy? And then you add to that that they don't want to even remotely be in the same molecular presence as uh, someone from Israel, and they will not meet with the United States of America face-to-face. They despise both of our nations for the most part. How can Biden, and I know you can't speak for him, but I mean, you you know, from the Central Intelligence Agency to, to running under, under Bolton, the National Security Council, I mean, you have been in some top-tier positions, my friend, and in the head shed under Trump. Why would Biden even remotely think to do this? Is he being puppeted yet again? Well, I think a lot of this is the fact that the Democrats are very angry that Trump withdrew from the nuclear deal, which Democrats think is one of Obama's most important achievements. And and they wanted to reverse everything that that Trump did. Uh, But I also believe that uh, among the, in the liberal establishment, they just want agreements. They love agreements. They love having the signing ceremony. They love bragging that they got an agreement. They don't care if it's a good agreement. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that we heard constantly from uh, Trump officials, that uh, we, we don't want a bad agreement. If we're going to negotiate with Iran, it's going to have to be meaningful, and Iran's going to have to stop activities that would help it get to a nuclear weapon. Uh, so I think it's a combination of things. Um, and I think there's also some radicals who think that maybe we can live with a nuclear Iran. Uh, I don't know that that's what Biden thinks, but I'm sure there's people in his administration who believe that. 
You write that Iran's nuclear weapons program has made major advances since January of this year. In fact, enriched uranium to 60%, uranium-235 for the first time this year. And that's a level that's very close to weapons grade. And Israel's intelligence agency has warned of this, not only the United States, but Europe under Trump. We, we agreed and we continued to partner with Israel under Biden. I don't see that happening. And we've heard from Jonathan Greenberg and other foreign relation experts, particularly niche to, to Israel. And this isn't happening. If anything, uh, Biden appears to be anti or distance from Israel. In the meantime, Iran engaged in other belligerent acts. And you you highlight those, the, the drone attack on an oil tanker and Iranian backed Houthi rebels, on and on and on. Do you see any of Biden, President Biden's advisors saying, hey, maybe we need to back off or are the are the stalwarts and the folks that want to continue to befriend Iran and cultivate that ungodly friendship? Are they the ones in charge? Because it doesn't seem like there's going to be any hope, Fred, from my vantage point reporting on this until Biden is out of office and we have a new president and hopefully a Republican. Well, I, I will say concerning Biden's relationship with Israel, uh, it, is not as, it is not great, but it's better than it was. At least we're talking. The Israelis don't like what they're hearing. They're very upset that uh, Biden officials are talking about offering sanctions relief in exchange for basically nothing. They think that's giving in a blackmail, but I'm happy that they're talking. I believe that the Biden administration is considering that maybe diplomacy is hopeless. They are talking about what they call Plan B, which is to impose sanctions until Iran decides to negotiate in earnest. And I, I have to think after this week, this week went so badly that there are some people in the administration who are arguing behind the scenes quite loudly that, uh, Mr. President, this isn't working. We have to try something else. Under John Bolton, when you were chief of staff of the National Security Council, President Trump had a maximum pressure, they called it, campaign, and you allude to that in your opinion editorial. What was that, and do you see that coming back? Well, it was a, it was a series of very tough sanctions, and Tom, President Trump put a thousand sanctions on Iran. <laughs> That's what you call maximum pressure to make the regime feel real economic pain and also try to isolate it. Uh, diplomatically until it changes its ways. And a lot of people said, well, that didn't work. The nuclear program proceeded. I think that program, I think those measures slowed it. But the alternative is to attack Iran. Trump didn't want to do that. In fact, he was, his advisors wanted him to attack. You may remember in mid, uh, 2019 after Iran shot down a drone, we almost bombed Iran. And at the last minute, Trump said, we're going to kill 100 Iranians because they shot down a flying robot. We're not going to do that. But um, I, I think maximum pressure is the best approach. It's not perfect. But uh, un until um, there's a regime change or until we make it feel enough pressure that the Iranian regime is prepared to negotiate in earnest, I don't see another way. Last question, 2022. Now, the Center for Security Policy is not a political organization, but you certainly want to see strong security protocols for the United States of America and have advocated for such and your board and such agree when we see the U.S. Senate split 50-50 do you see if the Republicans come into leadership again could that bode well for stronger security policy I would think so but we can't take political positions like that as a nonprofit. what I will say is that the center is going to work hard in 2022 to educate the American voter on national security issues that they have to factor into their vote next fall. So I, I, I will leave it at that. But, I mean, we, we definitely need better oversight of our national security policy, and the voters will have a chance to weigh in on that. Makes sense to me. 2018 Deputy Assistant to the President, Chief of Staff to the National Security Council under Trump, now the President of the Center for Security Policy. Fred, happy holidays to you and your family. Merry Christmas. We'll watch you on Fox News later today and keep up the good work. Sounds good. Merry Christmas.
You betcha. That's Fred Flights. Always a pleasure. And you have to follow this, my friends. You have to follow this. You have to engage, communicate with your congressional members and your U.S. senatorial delegation. If you're out of state, if you're in state, uh, Alaska, where we have this program, that's U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski and Dan Sullivan and Congressman Don Young. And you know what to do. Make sure they put pressure on the Biden administration to hold Iran accountable. Let's bring that maximum pressure campaign back by President Trump. 1,000 plus sanctions. Good old Donald Trump. I think he had the right idea. We cannot trust Iran. Stay with us. Good morning. Tom Anderson Show. Tom Anderson Show.